mass shooting, 13 injured as gunfire erupts in Chicago. We had uh, multiple victims shot, which were transported to various hospitals throughout the city. Investigation underway. Two Qantas jets come dangerously close near Adelaide. Worried to go back. <laughs> a little bit scared. Arctic arrest. Russia seizes a Greenpeace ship protesting oil exploration. From SBS, this is World News Australia. Hi and welcome to the program. I'm Andy Park. The United States has been rocked by another mass shooting, this time in Chicago. A toddler is among the 13 victims, but there's been no reports of deaths just yet. A number of the victims are in a serious or critical condition. Just after earlier. Two Qantas jets were forced to take evasive action near Adelaide when the planes flew into each other's airspace. Aircraft collision avoidance systems sounded on board two A380s when they flew within 220 metres from each other. A Transport Safety Bureau investigation is underway. Passengers Australia. The ADF has announced that three Australian soldiers were wounded in Afghanistan last week. They were hurt during an operation in Uruzgan province. The wounds were not serious. The ADF said several insurgents were killed during the operation. Fresh doubts have been cast over the Papua New Guinea asylum seeker deal. There are new claims refugees will never be settled in the country. The deal with Australia requires asylum seekers to be processed on Manus Island before being resettled in PNG. But video obtained by SBS suggests a different story. The mayor. At least 30 soldiers have been killed in attacks on military targets in Yemen. Two car bombs exploded at a military base in southern Yemen, killing about 20 soldiers. A separate shooting in the area also targeted soldiers. Security sources say al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is behind the attack. Coming up after the break, party rock, more like party wreck, the trashing of a family home. A Greenpeace Arctic process, uh, protest vessel seized at gunpoint by armed Russian security forces is being towed to the port of Murmansk. Armed guards stormed the ship and locked up the crew after activists scaled an oil platform. Two Australian residents are among those detained. Australia. Well, we've all heard stories about teens throwing a bash while the parents are away, but former NFL star Brian Holloway followed the trashing of his house on Twitter. Hundreds of teens invaded his family's holiday home in upstate New York. Focused on. Well, now to another story about another resident from upstate New York. Caroline Kennedy is the only surviving child of John F. Kennedy. She's appeared before the U.S. Senate's Foreign Relations Committee, seeking to be confirmed as the ambassador to Japan. Three. A Chinese woman has been found alive after being trapped in an abandoned well for 15 days. Local media reports the woman was walking through a cornfield when she fell into the four metre deep well in a rural part of central China's Henan province. She survived by eating corn cobs and drinking rainwater. Only days after being sworn in as Australia's Treasurer, Joe Hockey has joined finance ministers from other APEC countries at a forum in Indonesia. Mr Hockey will have bilateral meetings with his counterparts during the two-day conference to discuss ways to strengthen economic growth. A number of contributions in discussions which identified that uh, we cannot allow Asia to miss the opportunity associated with uh, the current uh, high levels of liquidity in global markets, uh, particularly when it comes to long-term investment in infrastructure. America's biggest bank, JP Morgan, has been hit with one of the biggest fines in corporate history. It's, uh, it's agreed to pay nearly $1 billion for a lack of controls, which led to a run of massive losses. Many traders had lost millions of dollars on complex financial products and then tried to cover them up. One was nicknamed the London Whale because of his large risky trades. Chief Executive Jamie Dimon says the firm has accepted responsibility and has acknowledged its mistakes. 
Let's check the finance figures now and the Australian share market closed lower after hitting five-year highs during the week. The miners fell with BHP stay, saying it will supply 20% of Western Australia's domestic gas for the next two decades. The major banks were also weaker. Financial group Suncorp suffered the biggest fall of the biggest 20 firms, while retailers Woolworths and Coles owner West Farmers both rose. Tokyo's Nikkei fell modestly following profit taking after two days of solid gains. Markets in Europe have changed little in early deals. Wall Street closed mixed after yesterday's surprise decision by the Federal Reserve to maintain an aggressive stimulus program. The Australian dollar is weaker against the greenback. It's also down across the other major global currencies. And on the commodity markets, both oil and gold are also down. Coming up, the weather and from a galaxy far, far away, what's the future of this guy's much-loved Star Wars collection? Wallaby James O'Connor has been stood down indefinitely and will miss the two-game rugby championship tour of South Africa and Argentina. Coach Ewan McKenzie says the winger has failed the team's behaviour standards. Australia. To the footy finals now and Hawthorne are through to the grand final after coming from behind to beat the Geelong Cats 102-97 to at the G tonight. Geelong led by 20 at three-quarter time. And in the NRL, the Sea Eagles have reached the preliminary final after defeating the Sharks by 24 points to 18 in Sydney tonight. Manly led by 14 to 6 at half time. To the weather now, and a weakening trough is triggering showers and storms over eastern New South Wales and a few isolated showers in Victoria. A high is clearing over South Australia while a cold front is moving over WA and producing showers and storms. In the major centres, fine in Canberra, Sydney, Brisbane and Darwin. A few clouds for Adelaide and Hobart. Patchy showers for Melbourne and Perth. Looking further afield, a few showers in Noumea, Tahiti and Auckland. Fine for Nandi. In Southeast Asia, rain for Phnom Penh and Port Moresby. A few clouds for Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. Thunder for Bangkok. For further north now and a few showers in Hanoi, Hong Kong and Shanghai. Fine for Beijing, cloudy for Seoul. Heading west now, fine in Baghdad, Dubai and Islamabad. Thunder for Mumbai and Delhi. A few clouds, clouds over Jerusalem. To Europe, patchy rain in Paris, Belgrade and Stockholm. Fine in Warsaw and Madrid. Cloudy for Berlin and London. In Africa, fine in Casablanca, Cairo and Harare. A few clouds about for Johannesburg and Nairobi. Some showers in Lagos, Algiers and Dakar. Over to South America now, cloudy in Bogota and Buenos Aires. A few showers in store for Rio de Janeiro and Panama City. And up to North America now, fine in Washington DC and New York. Cloudy for Toronto, Vancouver and Miami. Thunder for Chicago. Well, when a Brisbane man lost his job, he was forced to make a tough decision, one that he'd been resisting for decades. 40-year-old Paul Vandermeer says that now is the right time to sell all of his Star Wars memorabilia. He started collecting it as a kid. Spend just a few minutes inside 40-year-old Paul Vandermeer's garage and you'll get a glimpse of his passion. We've got stormtroopers, sand troopers, snow troopers, that sort of stuff. That was ignited a long time ago. Yeah, it was back in uh, 1978 uh, when the first film was released. Here they come. Uh, Just started collecting them paraphernalia. That stuff now fills his Brisbane garage, more than 3,000 pieces of Star Wars memorabilia. From lightsabers to masks. Comfy? Yeah, very comfortable. To figures in their original packaging and, well, this. Well, I leave it in the front window sometimes and, um, yeah, it scares a lot of people. What's probably even scarier to Paul was the decision he recently made after losing his job. Just decided enough was enough. Time, it's time to get rid of them. How much is all this worth? Depends on what you'd be willing to pay for a collection, Paul says, was probably worth up to $15,000 in the 1980s a part of his life Paul is preparing to part with, at least most of it. There's a few figures there that I, um, I'll probably tuck away. Proving you can take the collection away from the collector. Apparently Disney has the rights to the Star Wars for the next 
uh, three episodes, I think. Extinguishing his passion. I am C three PO. We'll see what happens then. Is well another story. Once a geek, always a geek. Well, that's the world this Friday. Have a great weekend and good night.